Being that it's a snowy hellscape outside right now, I decided I should give those who are interested an update on my game room progress. If you're curious how far this room has come, I'll post a link to the previous video I made in the description below. Hey Google, turn on game room. As you can see down below, I have several consoles hooked up to the big screen. There's the Xbox One Day One Edition. I thought about getting the Xbox One X, but I haven't got around to it just yet. Then below it is the Xbox 360. I found that it's the only way I can play online with certain people who have just a 360. So for the time being, it's staying here. Then I have a Wii U and the Wii. I don't play the Wii very much at all, but it's here nonetheless. Then to its right, I have the PlayStation 4 Pro and the PlayStation 3. And if you look over here, you can see the PlayStation VR. If you haven't tried VR, you really need to. I've tried the Oculus as well as the Vive, and while they are much more powerful, I ended up going with the PSVR because it was just as fun, it was cheaper, and to be honest, I didn't really notice that much of a difference in quality. I think it's because Sony has done several little tricks to make it feel just as good. I don't have loyalty to one platform or another. What matters to me most are the games. Speaking of which, let's move on to the games. At last count, I have over 750 physical games. I know the benefits of digital downloads, but for me, nothing beats having a physical copy, especially when it comes to vintage games. Part of the fun is picking the game off the shelf, cracking open the case, and plugging it into the console. It's just part of the experience, in my opinion. Now, I'm not going to show every single game for obvious reasons, but when it comes to keeping things in order, I have everything here organized. First, under the console generation, and then alphabetically within that generation. I don't like having gaps in the shelving between consoles, so this means that every single time I get a new game, I have to do some shuffling. It's annoying, but I prefer to do that instead of having gaps. One other thing I'll point out is the cases I use for the vintage cartridges. They take up a little more space than just having the cartridge itself, but having a case keeps everything protected and gives the shelf a nice uniform look. I posted a link down below where you can find them, as well as how to download the actual covers for thousands of games for free that will fit these cases. So I've shown you the consoles connected to the big screen. Let's keep going and look at the rest. At the top, you can see I have a Nintendo Switch. It's actually hooked up to the TV with a very long HDMI cable that is run underneath the baseboard. Next to it, I have an Atari 2600. It's the granddaddy of the gang, and it still plays just as well as it did before I was born. Next to that is a Nintendo Wii controller, and in my opinion, it's one of the most underrated consoles in recent times. Then below that is a ColecoVision. Basically, it's like an Atari, but with better graphics. Next to it is an Intellivision, and below that is a PlayStation 1 and two PlayStation 2s. And of course, no collection would be complete without an NES. To its right, we have a Super Nintendo. Then, an N64, a GameCube, and a Sega Dreamcast. I also wired in connections to charge several types of wireless controllers. I think it looks pretty cool, but it's also very functional. Below them, you'll see my very first console, the Sega Master System. Then we have a Sega Genesis, which is also a great console. And on the last shelf, we have an Xbox original console and another 360. I actually had a few of these because they had that red ring of death and friends just gave them to me. They didn't think that they could be brought back to life, but I took them apart and fixed the issue. Now you'll see along the bottom there are several boxes. These house the various accessories and are labeled appropriately. And if you haven't seen this before, this is my handmade Yoshi pocket bike. A few years ago I found the frame in a pile of garbage at a local bike mechanic shop. The employees there had abused it to the point of no return. I asked if I could have it, and since it was missing almost everything but the frame, and didn't run, they laughed and said, yeah, go for it. It took almost a year to make what you're seeing right here. Of course, that's when you count the winter as well. I made almost every kind of mistake you could think of when building this, but I had never worked with our bus before, so there was a huge learning curve to say the least. In fact, I just finished a script on how to show it off on this channel. Well, if you don't count this video, I guess. It'll be tricky to shoot, but I think it'll be worth it. So stay tuned for that. It does have one little fun feature, which includes this special key that turns on a custom bubble machine. That's right, it shoots bubbles out of its butt. So there's that. Anyway, let's keep going. I'm not a big collector of amiibos, but I have picked up one or two along the way. Below this shelf, you can see some of my handhelds. When I got this Game Boy, half of its screen didn't work. I took it apart and figured that the solder may have disconnected along the top of the screen that created the lines of resolution. So, since I had nothing to lose, I gently ran a soldering iron along the top ribbon and it actually fixed the problem. I felt pretty proud of myself for saving this little guy, and he works like a charm now. Next to it, I have my original Sega Game Gear that I had when I was a kid. I felt so baller when I took it to swim meets and could watch live TV on it. Too bad it went through batteries like a monster. 
Then I have a 3DS with an NES pattern on it, and a DS. I wish they were higher resolution, but they're still fun to play to this day. Below that are a few controllers for the NES and the Atari, and I gotta admit these Atari controllers look so badass. On this shelf I have my mini console collection. This includes the NES Classic, the SNES Mini, and the Sega Genesis Mini. I will probably get the PlayStation Classic as well, even though the reviews all say that they aren't that great. It just feels incomplete without it. And here you have the Power Glove. It's so bad. No, seriously, it's really bad. Next is the reason I am such a good speller. I have so many great memories sitting with my grandma playing Hangman with this thing. And then on this shelf are the rest of the games in the collection. On top of the shelf is one of the best packaging designs I have ever seen. This is a Star Wars drone made by Propel. Of course, it's a lot of fun to fly, but my favorite thing about this is when you open the lid. Okay, so it has four songs. That's one. That's two. And three. There it is. <laughs> All right, I'm not paying George Lucas or Disney any money, so I'm going to close this up. So that's the game collection. But you may be asking, how do I play them? If you've ever played a vintage console on a modern TV, you know they don't look great. And that's why I made this cabinet that wraps around an old school tube TV. It has wheels so I can pull it right up to the couch. And if you look here, you'll see a space with several audio, visual, and power cables. Each of these are labeled since almost all of the cables were proprietary back in those days. All I have to do is grab one of the consoles off of the shelf and hook it up with the corresponding cables. Then I push the appropriate button on one of the two splitters and we're good to go. This cabinet is custom built to the TV inside. The buttons you can see here are just little dowel rods that perfectly line up with the buttons on the TV inside of the cabinet. So if I push in the rod like this, it turns on the TV. Now that's old school. One more thing I plan to do with this cabinet is to design what is basically a giant vinyl sticker to go over each side. I'll show you what I have so far in a minute when I get to the studio. So that's the game room. And oh yeah, here is a light switch that I thought worked pretty well for the room. The joystick turns the light in the studio on and off, but it's the buttons on the side that give me the most joy. They have no other purpose other than make me smile. See? Now let's quickly go into the studio. This is where I do most of my editing for Rocketflix as well as any other work that pays the bills. This is the drafting table that I made way back in high school, which is where I tend to do most of my drawings. And here's where I spend most of my time editing videos for you guys. It's a simple setup, but it works pretty well for what I need. And over here is my sound wall. This is the main reason I get so many compliments on the voiceovers that I make for the channel. In my opinion, the foam wedges you see here are more cosmetic than truly functional compared to the sound dampening material that's directly behind it. It does such a good job of absorbing sound that it actually sounds different in this part of the studio. It's by no means the same quality as those million dollar sound studios, but it is a huge jump from what I had before. Now this isn't a standard sound wall. I didn't have the space to make a large sound booth down here, so I did the next best thing. I made the sound wall convert into a sound booth. It's small, only about the size of a telephone booth, but it works perfectly in cutting out all the random sounds that a sensitive mic would pick up. All I have to do is pull on this string right here, and I can pull it away from the wall. The fit is very tight as you can see. When measuring the wall, I even factored in the thickness of the paint. I wanted to maximize the booth size up to the very last millimeter. Okay, so as you can see, there are several extra joints here. This helps give the ability to bend the wall around the furniture. In short, the wall is double jointed. If I didn't do this, the desk here would have to be much further away from the wall and that just wouldn't work. Once I pull out both wings and bend them into a vertical rectangle, I just have to take the square piece hanging on the wall over here and put it on top. It's not perfectly soundproof, but it is striking just how much the sound improves once I do this. Speaking of sound, the type of mic I like to use is called a Yeti. There are lots of options out there, but I really like this one. It does take quite a while to dial it in exactly how you want, but once everything is set, it works like a dream. I added a dead cat to it recently, as you can see. Obviously, there isn't a lot of wind down here, but I found it made my recordings just a touch better. So as promised, I wanted to show you what I have so far in regards to the vinyl sticker for the cabinet. 
So as you can see, I am drawing out several of my favorite characters. I had to be selective since it was starting to get a little cluttered, but this will give you an idea of what I'm shooting for. Hopefully the next time I make an update to this room, the sticker will be complete and installed. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll most likely see it completed there first. Links to my social media are below. So that's the tour. Now, I decided I wanted to finish this tour by playing a little Spectra. It's such a simple indie game, and I love it. Even though I have so many options available to me, I still find this one one of my favorites to unwind to. It kind of reminds me of what it feels like to filter through traffic. And actually playing this game highlights to me why I should never filter in real life. Simply because I hit way too many objects in this game. So, if you like this video, please be sure to hit the like button. It really does help the channel. If you haven't already, please hit the sub button. I've made a lot of different videos over the years, as well as several that are in the works at the moment. So by subscribing, you're going to be the first to see them. Now that the writing season is over, I plan on finishing up those remaining edits. Also, if you feel like challenging me to a game on Xbox Live, you can find me under Rocket44. And until then, I'll see you out there.